Hello and welcome everyone to this video on Implementing Deep Entity Retrieval by Zaran Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zaran Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. So hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of implementing deep entity retrieval. Now see, what is the use of it? So implementing deep entity retrieval here in OData data services involves retrieving data from multiple related entities in a single request. So for example, suppose I have got a header item and shipment kind of relationship. Let me show to you. Uh, I've got this table. Well, I have created these three tables. First one is header, uh, sales header table. And in this one, I've got uh, two fields, ID and order type. And also I have stored uh, two fields, here, sorry, two record here. The first one is one with sales ID one. Then we have got the second record with sales ID two. Next, uh, we have got uh, another table, sales item. And in this sales item, I have got three fields out of which the first two are primary key here. The, these are sales ID item number. Then we've got the material number. And if you will click on the contents tab, you will see we have two, again, four records around here. Out of first two are the where the sales ID is 11 and item number is 1020. Then our, the second one are 22 and item, we have got the item number as 2020. And the third one is uh, we have is shipment. Now see what is happening around here. Go to the shipment and uh, uh, display it. Again, see we have got six record here. Out of his first three is one. And the last three is two. Here we have got four fields. The out of his first two sales ID and item number are primary keys. Now see what we are going to do. So the concept here is in both these three tables, we have a common key, which is sales ID. So what I want to do is my, I've got three tables and all three tables are related to each other via, a, via the same primary key. And what my user wants, when my user wants to give the data from sales order item shipment with only one URL to get the data here. That means he want to get all the data from this table using a single URL. So for that concept, what we can do, we can use the concept of implementing deep entity retrieval in OData services in OData, OData services. So what is deep entity here? So deep entity is nothing but a deep structure that is a structure within a structure. This is my requirement. I've got the three tables and I want to implement it using my O data services so that I can fetch all the data from either from header to item or from header to shipment or both of them. And I want to get the data from my gateway client using a single URA. So what the things you are going to do? See, uh, what are the things you are going to do? These are the steps which will be needed for the implementation. First one is you will have to create an association and navigation. The association is already there. We have to see, we have got the association between a header and item and header and shipment. And the association is what they all are associated via the same primary key, which is sales ID. So we are required to create an association here and we will define a navigation path from sales to item and from sales to shipment. And then we will use this navigation path to implement our methods in OData data services. So what I will have to do, the first one is I will have to give the association and navigation. Then we will go to the MPC extension class to create our deep structure. So here deep structure, we have got the two fields from sales header and the, in the item we have got three fields. And then in the segment we have got four fields. So after implementation, how our deep structure would look like? It will look like this one. Uh, we have got two fields from our header. Then in the item, it has the third field. And it itself, this item will itself consisting of three fields as well. Then we've got the shipment as the fourth field of this deep structure. And in it, we already, we have the four fields. Next, what we will do, the third step is we will have to implement the get expanded entity set. This is the method which is required to implement to get the data from our deep structure which is get expanded entity set. 
and at last we will be required to give the correct URI to get the data. So fine, these are the tables which we will be using here. Let's go to the implementation part. What you will do? You will go to SCGW transaction code and create a OData project. Then what you will do? We will be required to create entity and entity set for all these three tables. So for that purpose, what is required to do? We'll go simply right click here. Uh, you will go to import. You will use the DDIC structure, and here you will be giving the name of your entity, and you will mark this checkbox. Then after you will be selecting the field. So that you will do it for the consecutive three times in order to create the three entity and entity sets. So after the creation, see, we will get these three entities here as header, as item, and as, as shipment. In as header, go to the properties tab. You will see we have got the two fields here. And uh, in the as item, go to properties tab. We have got the three fields around here. And go, if you go to the shipment one, we have got all the four fields around here. So this is what my entity types. And we also have three, since we already have marked the the default checkbox for a creation of our entity set. So our my entity set would have been created automatically around here. So I've got these entity types and entity set. Now the next one, see what we got. This is my first step. Second step is I have we are required to create the association and navigation path around here. So what you will do, you will simply right click on this association or you will simply right click on this data model, go to create and we'll go to the association part. So in the association, you will be required to give the name of the association name. So I already told you that we have the association from header to item. Then we've got the association from header to shipment. So first, you will do what you will do. You will do the header to item. And here you will select the entity type name by clicking on this F4 button. So first will be from our header. And in the second dependent entity should be our uh, item. Then you will select the cardinality for header as one because we will have only one data in our header and in the item we can have from zero to n record as well. In the navigation, we'll give the name of a navigation property. So I've given header to item navigation. This is how you mainly be creating it from header to item and from header to shipment as well, which I've created here. So see, after, since you have marked the uh, independent entity as uh, header as independent entity. That's why in the its navigation you will see the name of your navigation path: header to item navigation and header to shipment navigation. All right. So this is my second step. The third step is creating the deep structure. So for creating the deep structure, what you will do? You will simply click on this generate button to generate the runtime artifact of your OData services. Uh, see here, we have got the various OData services. Then we will go to this MPC extension class, so double click on it to go to the source CAD. And here you will open it in change mode by clicking here. And then you will create a deep structure here. So for the first, you will take the two fields around here. Then you will be required to it create internal table here for the TS item and TS shipment. These are the default table which have been created in MPC since you have created your entity and entity set. So here how you will be creating your deep structure. So here the, you will give the navigation name as the field header to item navigation then header to shipment navigation. All right. So this is my third step. The fourth one step is we are required to implement our DPC extension method. So how we'll be implementing it, you will right click on the double click on this DPC extension. In this attribute, you will go to in this methods tab in the inherited method folder, go to this inherited method folder and you'll open this IPPL SRV routine. And in this, see we have got expanded get expanded entity method here. So just below it, you will get your method get expanded entity set. Right click on it and click on redefine. After that, you will get your method in the redefine Fourier definition folder. Just go into it and see what are the implementation we have done. So for this TSD, we have got our met, uh, we have got our structure in this class. So what I've done here, I've used this structure to create my internal table and work area for my deep structure. Then what I've done, 
I have created an internal table for my all these three tables, uh, these three data table from my S11. Then the second one is we are required to create a structure for our entity types for item and segment. Okay. The next thing we will be doing here, whatever the entity set that you will be giving from your gateway client, you will be getting it into this particular parameter let me show to you i4 entity set name all right so you will use this part of parameter here to give as a case statement so when the value will be your header set which you will be giving from your gateway client then you will write this logic the first logic says that you are fetching all the data from your header then if size of rc equals to true you are fetching the data from item and segment after that you are required to use the concept of loop within a loop. See what we are doing around here. First, we are looping into header and we are smoothly transferring the data from header to deep entity. Then after we are looping it, inside it, we are looping into item to uh, work area of item and we are transferring data from LS item to LS item entity with the work area which we have created. And then we are transferring, appending uh, this LS item entity into deep entity deep entity is the field header to item navigation and the same thing we have done with our segment one after that at last we are required to append our work area of deep entity into internal table of the deep entity all right then you will call the copy data to ref method to transfer all this lt deep entity into er entity set if you will see your er entity set you will get its type ref to data double and it means that it can be of any type which will be defined at the runtime all right so now we are required to test our odata services so we'll simply go to this service maintenance folder go to this gateway client one click on this execute button all right select this entity set and what you will do you will use here question mark dollar and expand is equal to the name of your navigation which is my header to item navigation click on the execute button see what is actually happening around here we are selecting the json format so that we can understand it more clearly now see what is happening around here now json format click on execute here now see for the header to shipment, we are not getting any data because here we are calling header to item navigation. That's why we are getting the value of first header. We are not getting for shipment at this moment, but we are getting for our item one. We are getting for our item value. See, for the second one, we are getting again all the value of our item. Now, suppose you are giving here a header to shipment navigation. Header to ship header to ship navigation. In this time, we will get data from your. See, we are getting the data from. Uh, Header to uh, the field, two fields of header here, one and AV, then we're getting our shipment data, all the those four fields of our shipment, and we are not getting the item. So this is how you can test your old data service, or you can simply implement the get expanded entity set to for deep entity retrieval. This is really very crucial concept, and we are required to understand it very clearly so that we can get data from interrelated tables by using a single URI and which can be a single parent relationship or multiple parent child relationship it can be anything around here this is my implementing deep entity retrieval in odata services which is a very crucial concept and you should always focus on it so thank you very much mm -hmm.